So in this example, I'm going through a two-way repeated measures analysis of variance in SPSS, or PASW as it's now called. Um, so it's a two-way ANOVA because I have two factors. Each factor has two levels, therefore it's a two-by-two two analysis of variance. And it's a repeated measures because each of my participants took part in all four conditions. Um, so this is also called a related ANOVA. Um, and it's very simple to implement in SPSS. The first thing to note, the way to lay out your data, is that each row represents a different participant. So in this example, I have uh, 22 participants. And each column represents your factors and your levels of the factor. So for example, let's pretend that, work, uh, that factor A is uh, working memory load. So you're in a, a in an experiment, a reaction time experiment, and in one condition, whilst they have to perform a primary task, they have to maintain a high working memory load. So for example, you give them six letters to remember, and in the second level of that factor, the low load condition, you only give them two letters to remember. So this is our first factor, working memory load. Our second uh, factor, for example, in this example, is um, whether um, the task they're currently engaged in is a repetition of what they've just done or a switch. So it's a task switching experiment getting participants to switch between different simple cognitive tasks whilst measuring reaction times. So for this second factor of task sequence I have two levels repetition and switch. So although you can lay out your data just A1, B1, A1, B2 etc it's always better to give them a, a, a more meaningful name. So if we click on variable view in this first factor it's A1B1 so our level 1 of our first factor, factor A, is high working memory load so I'd write for example high uh, you can just leave it at that and our first factor is a switch for the second one um, we're still in the first factor the first level of the first factor so it's still high it's still high working memory load but we're changing to the second level of the other factor, so this is repeat. Now you see we're moving on to the second level of the first factor A, so now we're going low working memory load switch, and uh, big button, low working memory load repeat. There we go. So we go back to the data view, now we can see that the, the columns have changed, so this is our data for high working memory load switch, this is for high working memory load repeat, this is low working memory load switch, low working memory load repeat. So we're now ready to do the ANOVA on this data. So to do this you go to Analyze, down to General Linear Model and down to Repeated Measures. So your first task is to give your factor a name and describe how many levels it's got and then we're going to add it into the the design. So our first factor was uh, working memory load and it's got two levels so high and low. Click add. Now our second one is a sequence, task sequence and it's got two levels repeat and switch so click add. Now we go to define now this is where we have to tell SPSS which of our columns we want to include in the date in the analysis. It's very simple in ours because we've only got four columns and we're going to use all four bits. In some data sets, all of these columns can be filled with different uh, aspects of data that you've collected from participants. So we're going to use these. The way I've ordered it, uh, it's in the correct order, so we can just select all of them and move them across into this within subjects variables because it's a repeated subjects uh, repeated measures design so it's within subjects all of these variables were manipulated within subjects we put them in here now it's important to see here in brackets we've got the name of our two factors working memory load and sequence um, it's important we put them in in the right order so in the brackets what it's saying is we want level one of the first factor working memory load and level one of the second factor sequence which is this one, so we put it in. Now you see for the second one it's still asking for the first level of the first factor, working memory load, so high, but now it's asking for the second level of the other factor, sequence, 
which is repeat. So we'd put this one in here, and so on. So it's just always good a sanity check to make sure you've got them in in the right order. You put them in in different orders, um, your results will come out slightly confused. So now what we want to do is click on options. We'd like to display the means for all of these, so what it's going to do is display the means for the factors working memory load, sequence, and for the interaction. You can put other things down here, so for example descriptive statistics if you so wish, estimates of effect size which we'll leave out for the time being, etc. So there's other uh, fancy things that we can do here. Hit continue. Now if we want to do a plot, uh, which we'll quickly do, so for example on the horizontal axis we would like a task sequence whether it's a repeat or a switch and we want separate lines to represent working memory loads. So this is going to give us a line graph um, it's not good to use in a final report so it's not in APA format but it's good to just get a visual on your data and then click continue and this is it for a basic ANOVA so we're all set um, just hit OK and it will start running great okay so once we've got this we've now got our output I'll just move this out of the way so here you can see we've got our descriptive statistics giving us our mean and standard deviation for each of the levels and factors move a bit further down comes the uh, results of ANOVA so we want to move down to the table that says tests of within subjects effects and this is basically our ANOVA summary table so it gives us our main effect of working memory load our main effect of the second factor sequence and also a statistic for the interaction here um, and if we move a little bit further down we've got our estimated marginal means so giving us our means for all the factors and then at the bottom we should have a graph which is here um, right okay so let's talk through this within subjects effects ANOVA table so for our main effect of working memory load so this is our first factor what it's doing is it's collapsing across the other factor which was sequence so it's ignoring whether it's a repeat or a switch it only cares whether um, the first factor was a high working memory load or a low working memory load so we can see here our F value is 4.956 and our significant or our P value is less than 0 0.05 so we know that our manipulation of working memory load is significant likewise for sequence we have an F of 15.97 so which is highly significant less than 0 0.01 so a little bit further down here comes our interaction so do the two factors interact with one another um, we see that the F is less than 1 and the P is much greater than 0 0.05 so this is far from significant so our interaction is not significant so if we scroll a little bit further down because you recall from um, hopefully from, from your labs that the ANOVA tells you that there is a difference it doesn't tell you where the difference is or in which direction the difference is heading so we had a main effect of working memory load, so we come down to the estima estimated marginal means and we see that our first level of working memory load had a reaction time of 839.64 if you round it up and our second level had a mean reaction time of 816.99 so our first level was high working memory load our second, fact, uh, second level sorry, was low working memory load so we see that reaction times are significantly slower when they're maintaining an irrelevant high working memory load. Then for sequence, if we move down, our first level of sequence was switch. Our mean reaction time is 841 milliseconds. For repetition, our mean reaction time is 815 milliseconds. So there's a large difference here. And this was significant in the ANOVA as well. And here's our value for our interaction. So for the high working memory load, the first level of this factor, it splits it down into switch and repeat reaction times and we see that the difference is approximately 37 milliseconds between the two, between switch and repeat and for a low working memory load the difference is um, slightly, uh, slightly smaller so it's about 15 milliseconds but the difference between these two i.e. the difference between repetition and switch between the high and the low working memory load is not significantly different so although visually on the graph we can see that it looks like the effect gets smaller here compared to here
this interaction has not come out significant uh, because our ANOVA says so. So you cannot conclude that um, the interaction is significant because it wasn't in the ANOVA. So if you were to write your ANOVA up, um, I won't go into too much detail about that, but you get your degrees of freedom, uh, so you'd have F um, open brackets 1 comma 21 close brackets equals and then report your value for F and then you do this for the, the sequence and also for the interaction.